YouTube. Welcome back to my channel, Manifesting with Karmic Side Gal. My name is Shakayla, and here I discuss manifesting, manifesting the life you deserve to have, my process and journey to ascension, and of course, spirituality in general. If you haven't already, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And why not go ahead and subscribe as well while you're at it since I am on a journey to monetization and each and every one of your follows and subscribes make a huge difference. Um, and hit the notification bell while you're at it so that you can be notified each and every time that I do post. And if you're part of spiritual family, big hearts go to you. Again, I am so grateful for you guys and I just appreciate you. And I'm excited to begin another um, year together. So we've been doing this for a minute. I don't know how many new year videos have I done. But I'm happy to be with you guys. So this may or may not be a lengthy message i'm drinking a celsius Heike used to be addicted to those and um i basically stopped drinking them but this is the first one i had in a long time um what do i want to start with let's start with some reiki i want to move into the new year into some reiki and um this is one that i've done before and i feel like a five minute meditation or something i'll link it up here before um and since we're you know moving into a new energy we're transitioning into a new sign a new season um let let's get on another flight Let's catch a flight together. So I want you to take a moment to get at home with your body. Let's just start by giving yourself a big hug. Take a few deep breaths. Feel at home in your body. Bring your attention, bring all of your energy here in this space, in your body. And when you feel grounded, when you feel focused enough, and if you have a hard time doing that, just focus on your breath. But when you are ready, you can imagine yourself with your boarding pass in hand, walking up to the security checkpoint, standing in line. If you've never been in an airport before, before you can get to your gate where you're, where you get on the plane, you have to go through security checkpoint. So you're finally walking up. They just took your ID and your boarding pass and made sure that you were indeed you. And really take a look at that picture on your ID. Let's be present in, in this moment for real. Um, how do you see yourself right now? How do you see yourself in this moment? And once you take note of that, you continue. You're waiting for your luggage to come out of the um, x-ray machine. And they ask you to walk inside of this bubble and spread your legs. Put your arms up like this. And then the security guard asks you to step out. And now you're just waiting for your luggage to come out. What does your suitcase look like? Do you have a carry-on? Did you just bring a purse? 
Did you, are you one of those people that just take shoes and a wallet and a jacket? What baggage are you bringing into 2023? Allow the energy to speak for itself. What it is that you visualize bringing. What would have been in the bag? What is the energy that you feel that you need to take with you? And there are many good things that we have gained in life through our experiences. There are new habits that we learned just in this past year, and you want to bring them with you. But there are some things that you really don't need. And depending on how you are receiving this message, it could be material things, it could be people, it could be a job, you know what it is. As you move into this new season, and this is a season where it's a little rough, we're getting our first real snow this week and it's going to be like below um, 20 wind chill by Sunday. So just think about that when you are going into this new season, are you taking the things that can weather through the storm? Now, your items have come out of the x-ray machine and you're walking to your gate. Now you can stop to get a drink maybe get some food I don't know how much time do you have before your flight are you one of those people who get to the airport extra early and then just hang around or are you one of those people that are like rushing to your flight like you get there and then everybody's standing around waiting to start boarding and reflect on that <laughs> because it's not just an airport thing it's a real life thing how it is that you manage your time how it is you manage your energy and if you generally feel rushed or are you allowed to rest in everything that you do I can easily get zoned out and get into a meditative state a lot throughout my day because I do a lot of things that bring me peace and joy. Even doing my actual work, it brings me a lot of peace and joy. Um, doing a podcast, it brings me a lot of peace and joy. Most of the time being a mom, it brings me a lot of peace and joy. So I'm able to just get in the zone and be present with these things. But the more often that you want to check out, that you want to detach, then that is going to be the moments where um, you realize that where you are presently is not something that's bringing fulfillment with you or else you will want to be engaged. So though that is when we have to make the choices to release some things from our life if they are not bringing us fulfillment. Now they're calling you up. Do you have a first class ticket? Are you somebody that buys regular ticket? Or is this a luxury experience that you're creating in your head? What's, you tell me what's going on. And you board the flight, they check your ID. You go in, stow away your items if necessary. You find your seat, and everybody has a window seat on this flight, okay? You get comfortable. This is the part where the flight attendant is giving you instructions on how to be safe. As we move in into this new energy, we reflect on 
versions of ourselves in the past that was not capable of um, putting themselves first, of putting their own metaphorical um, mask on. And once again, the flight attendant is here to remind you that put your own mask on first and then help others. So we are moving into this new season with our boundaries in our intact, with healthier communication skills. Um, these are all things that we've overcome together this year as a collective. And if you haven't, then you're moving in that direction, at least if you're watching my videos then hopefully that's what you've been doing too is like really doing the work so you turn off your devices take a deep breath Make yourself comfortable. And you open up your window and you see the clouds. The sun is rising. It almost feels like you're floating in the air. Just existing. Allowing yourself to just be here in this moment. And loving who you are in this moment and accepting every part of you. You drift to sleep and you wake up. And as you begin to feel yourself, you know, stretch it out. Really feel this new energy that we are present in. So we're going to jump into the astrology portion of this video. 2023 is a universal year number seven okay seven is such a divine number first i'm going to get into like how how do you even get the year number okay so the first thing that you have to do is just add all of the numbers together um so in this case 2023 adds up to a seven making it a seven universal year the number seven represents analytical thinking, faith, intuition, logic, philanthropy, self-reflection, and spirituality, okay? And um, the seven, number seven can also manifest as an energy of cynicism. And I didn't really know what that meant. So I had to look it up because I was like, what does that even mean? It says, Cynicism is a school of thought of ancient Greek philosophy as practiced by the cynics. For the cynics, the purpose of life is to live in virtue in agreement with nature. As reasoning by creatures, people can gain happiness by rigorous training and by living in a way which is natural for themselves, rejecting all conventional desires for wealth, power, and fame, and even flouting conventions openly and derisively in public instead they were led to a simple life free from all possessions wow this is actually really nice i feel like a lot of people are more leaning into this simple life um nowadays this is definitely something that i want for myself like i definitely want to build my home and be able to live off the land and have animals there and just like it just be my sacred place away from everything um i feel the need to become less and less materialistic even this year for the holidays um i decided we was only going to do five gifts for um christmas i actually got this idea from one of my co-workers shout out to larissa and 
what you do is you get a want, a need, a read, a watch, and um, what's the last one? I forgot what the last one is. That it really, I will post it in the description box because I really can't remember. Um, but in my last video, I was kind of leading up to this saying how we was moving into this energy now where we are more moving into authenticity and really separating ourselves from any um like any like generalization generalizations placed on us by society any expectations any beliefs it's like everything is genuinely what we want for ourselves and nothing that anybody or anything is imposing on us okay um so the first thing with the number energy the energy of seven anyone born on the seventh the 16th or the 25th of any month ruled by the number seven and the planet K2. Um, K2 is Karaka or the indicator of intelligence, wisdom, non-attachment, fantasy, penetrating insight, derangement, and psychic abilities. K2 is believed to bring prosperity to the devotee's family, removes the effects of snake bites and illness arising out of poison. K2 rules over Ashwini, Maka, and Mula Nakshatas. If I'm pronouncing any of that right, I apologize. Um, however, some believe that K2 gets exalted in Scorpio or Sagittarius and gets debilitated in Taurus or Gemini. If K2 occupied the beneficial houses in the horoscope, then it will give good results, okay? So that means that you want to look to see which houses that you have Scorpio and Sagittarius in. You're going to benefit this year in those houses as it being a seven year and being ruled by K2. But you also want to look in the houses where you have Taurus or Gemini because those houses you are going to be debilitated in. So you might have to put a little extra energy into what you have in those houses, okay? So you also want to check the houses ruled by those signs. So Scorpio is ruled by the eighth house. That is the house of shared resources. Okay. And the house of inner values. And then, um, what is it? Is it Sagittarius? It's ruled by the ninth house and it is expanded horizons. It's the house of evolution. Okay. So you want to look at the ninth house and the eighth house so that you can see those two signs that you're going to have the most luck in in the year of 2023. And then you want to look at the houses that rule Taurus and Gemini, um, which are, let me see, Gemini is ruled by the third house. This is the house of and your immediate environment it is the house of learning and then taurus is ruled by the second house is personal resources and it says house of concrete values so these are going to be specifically the two areas in your life in 2023 that you're going to have um i'll say more opportunities for growth in because we don't want to look at any of these aspects like it's negative to you or it's going to be harmful for you. That might just mean that depending on how much growth you've already had, it may not be presented to yourself as an obstacle at all. Okay. It just means that if these are things that you have not already um, had a potential, I mean, potential, a substantial amount of growth in in areas of life where, you know, like, like I said, better communicator, better thought processes, how it is that you interact with other people, how it is that you learn, are you open to learning from other people, how it is that you use technologies, your relationships with your sibling and neighbors, um, all of these things are going to be 
opportunities for growth you know what i'm saying and the same thing with the second house and these are your personal finances land um, money so basically any assets that you own what it is that are is valuable to you where you put that in the things that you are attracted to um any possessions what you see is beauty and also your sense of security these are going to be opportunities for growth as well so we could see in 2023 some of the obstacles looking like um difficulty in relationships um more difficult time when trying to have um like i feel like this is going to be a lot of grade schools, you know, um, K through 12, we're going to see a lot of issues there. We're already seeing a lot of issues arising there where they're for the longest teachers just haven't been paid enough. And now that the cost of living is going up and up and up, we're looking at people who go every day to teach our future, our youth and not having enough money to take care and provide for themselves. Like that's extremely fucked up, you know? Um, all of these things in 2023, we can see that this is going to, on a larger scale, not just personally creating obstacles for us. Like personally in my area, they're raising the taxes because they don't have more enough money for the schools and more people are moving to this area, but there hasn't been more schools built. They don't even have enough teachers to fill the schools that we have now so this looks like even larger classroom sizes and this lowers the quality of education so you know those are things that we're going to be dealing with um and then um just also money management in general if you are not good at money management you're going to be have more opportunities for growth that could be depending on what it is you could get a raise you could see more money and you either can start to use that money better um or you'll fall back into those same habits of poor money management and then be in the same place that you was last year you know what i'm saying it's an opportunity for growth here or it could look like you having tight finances so that you can learn how to work with what you got being more resourceful so so th those are the areas that we're looking at that can have like potential conflicts for the year of 2023. Um, now, what else did I want to say um, about the number seven? Okay, so the number seven is a prime number and so that means that it can broke, be broken down into energies of three and four um so the energy excuse me the energy of three is the energy of the inner child you know what i'm saying and the energy of four is the home so those two numbers directly correlate and bring into the energy of seven where we're looking at you know healing um healing from traumas learning how to create a new foundation based off of our new stability our new foundation that created we created from reparenting ourselves getting to know ourselves healing those wounds that we had even from a young age um there there's also a huge aspect of creativity okay and just being generally grounded so 2023 is going to be a really good year for creative projects and really being able to have stability through that there's going to be even more opportunities for people to be like working in remote positions or just doing things that are based on creative abilities like how i graphic design or like a lot of people are getting into social media management or like different things like that a lot of online work um seven is a very highly spiritual number so this year even more than last year we're going to be seeing even more people being starting to be on a spiritual journey even more people being attracted to this type of stuff whether it be in tarot astrology numerology more people getting into that and more people being feeling called to get back to them true self 
Um, and then number seven is a masculine energy. So we're going to be looking at the energy of the world being masculine, trying to do more, trying, urging us to do, to fix. And it's a very, maybe a difficult thing, but this is going to be the time for us to really start to move into that authenticity and really only doing the things that's in alignment with you and the things that feel good to you. Even if the energy is pushing you to go, 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 do, 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 you have to um, prioritize your needs your wants, your health, and really even you have the ability to keep pushing yourself like that. Because at the end of the day, when you're the one broke, tired, and everything, no job, nothing, they won't be there. It's, it's just going to be you. Um, so now we want to look at the shadow side and the light side of the energy of number seven. So on the light side first, we... um are looking at more developed intellect okay so there's going to be a lot of creative ideas and new things advances in technology than what we had um before in the past okay and this is just going to be like a very fertile place to create new ideas okay um and it will specifically be, be related to occult and metaphysical things okay um, this is going to be a time where intuition is very high. It's going to be very easy to trust yourself. It's going to be very easy to, to lean in towards the things that really make you feel good and also to have good discernment. You know what I'm saying? Um, more people are going to be keen to doing research, to finding stuff, not just like listening to it on the news, not just seeing a TikTok video and a YouTube video, even listening to what I have to say and doing your own knowledge. Once, sometimes I'll be wrong. Sometimes facts change. And when I say by that is the more research is done, the more things get disproven. You know what I'm saying? It's like a... a somebody might put information out and it could be one thing and then years later they do more testing they do more research and they find out that is no longer the truth or even just me personally being on my journey there's things that I might have said about manifesting in the past that I don't agree with or I don't believe now and um I can't it's like it, I have it has to be in a moment thing for me to bring it up and be like yeah I used to say this but now this so many things are like that that I couldn't even begin to list those things um but just really investigating and processing information through your own point of view okay and nobody else's um this is like with the in my last reading I was saying the new moon was giving us two of pentacles it's like there's a lot more justice there's a lot more balance coming in um and more people just being to be in a more even and like consistent lifestyle okay i'll say that i feel like there's a lot of more evening of the scales on a financial way i feel like we f definitely are moving towards like reparations and stuff like that so the time where you were seeing all these billionaires and stuff like my personal prediction for 2023 is like the fall the fall of celebrity or the type of people you see becoming celebrities or becoming famous is not like before not because they was a singer or actor because they actually doing good things and another thing is that people are going to be more towards secret holistic uh, wellness holistic healing like m stuff like reiki is going to become more popular um people are going to be needing that healing because they're seeking spiritual ascension and in order to ascend you have to heal from the things that are weighing you down and keeping you in a low vibration okay um and even not just on um, a spiritual level, but um, on a physical level, well, emotional level, there's going to be a high influx and a need for like therapists, holistic doctors, um, those people like dietitians and people that like help people get a diet based on their blood type and all kinds of stuff. There's going to be a huge influx of that. So if these are things that you have passion for, it's like get into the industry before it's blowing up, okay? Um, now, as far as the shadow side for the energy of number seven, um, this is 
to me, a lot of times when people start to prioritize themselves, they find it difficult to navigate their relationships and they find it easier just to be on their own. It's easier not to have to manage and work in relationships. It's easier not to have to change anything about me so that I can communicate more healthily with people I care about. You know, it's easier to just say, I just won't go out and do nothing because, um, I'd rather just stay at home alone, even though you do inner enjoy energi inner energizing what socializing with other people. Um, so during this year, really try and lean towards being more open to connecting with others because your relationships are a reflection of you. Okay, and just all you have to do is use this energy to your best advantage, which is that having that discernment and trust for yourself and knowing that in this version of yourself, who you are now, you are capable of um, choosing the right people to bring into your life that are going to be able to sustain a relationship with you and that you are going to be able to take with you in these next journeys. These are other people who are also doing the work for themselves, who are also um good communicators or at least working towards it who can be reflective who can have honest conversations who can disagree with you healthily you are attracting that in so be open to it okay um another thing is your opinions it's like i hate to be that guy but opinions are just like assholes everybody has them um, so a lot of the times when we start to get into the research, when we start to do the work, we start to learn that a lot of the parts of ourselves that we thought made up us was really just institutionalized. You know what I mean? It's like, um, racism, you know what I'm saying? It's ingrained in all of us. There's things that we do on a daily basis that is because racism and when you start to learn about things, when you start to learn, oh, this food or why things are called this a certain thing or whatever, you start to really learn this stuff. You can really separate and detach from maybe Christianity. You know what I'm saying? Like, so during this time, it's a good time to realign your values with who you are now based on the knowledge that you have now um not to be so opinionated but to be more open to understanding other points of view outside of the one that you've always had okay this energy is really pushing us to be more carefree and when we choose to have like a more carefree lifestyle we run the risk of having damage in our relationships because when other people are not doing those same things they might look at you and judge you because you don't want to do a regular nine to five type of thing or they might look at you and say like you know why they just can't live the way like this or they just might not just see life the way that you do so you have to be okay with just still leading your own path no matter what other people say about it you know what i'm saying or how they feel about it or whatever um be more open to connecting with others for sure but also be the energy that it is that you're trying to attract um the seven the year seven is really good for people who work in any type of tech tech related field philosophers alchemists writers you know astrologers this year is going to be very abundant for these type of um careers anyone that works with their intuitive ability so that could be even somebody like a detective you know what i'm saying that could be somebody like a doctor or a nurse these professions are really going to benefit in this year um psychics even social workers any type of researchers are really going to benefit in the year of seven okay um this year the energy of seven is makes it a little bit difficult in relationships if you're not open to understanding 
other people's perspective because everybody else is going to be following their own truth so to speak because everybody's going to be putting their own self first this creates gaps in our relationships because we're no longer so focused on what other people are doing and their what it is that they're trying to do and all that stuff so that means that they're where we would have been so much given our energy worried about other people and what they had going on it's creating little distance in the relationships so this year you definitely want to just be um okay with being wrong you want to pick and choose your battles and um just try and be more understanding in in relationships okay but this is a good year for very loyal connections if it's a loyal connections this is a good year for faithfulness the more authentic you are the more that you are going to attract a mate a match for you even if it's not in love even if it's in friends even if it's your job the energy of what you are is what you are attracting so keep that in mind Every day as you're going through, the thoughts that you're thinking, everything, you know what I'm saying? All of that has to do with it. So, I want to pull a couple cards. Thank you, Spirit. I will tag the decks below. So as I'm splitting the deck, we have the energy of 13, which is release. And then we also have the energy of six, which is relieve, believe and succeed. Such beautiful energy. Moving into our new season. You guys definitely have to check out my next video, which I will be doing what each life path needs to hear for 2023. Um, you guys, out of all the content on my channel, y'all really go up and go crazy for the life path number content. So I always try and with every um changing of the year i always try and oh my computer died mm. i always try to what was i even saying i do not know okay so the card at the bottom of the deck is the energy of five, okay? The energy of five is all about change. It's all about being receptive and being open, okay? Um, being flexible. Five is also the number of pleasure. It's the number of the five senses. So it's all about us being in tune and also um, learning to have balance between the things that bring us pleasure and also not over consuming okay and this card says challenging times okay i feel a very protective energy from this card i feel like um the one thing that spirit wants you to take away into this next season with us as we move into 2023 is that you are divinely protected okay has him having this shield and then even this bubble of protection surrounding his auric field okay and as i said 20 2023 being a very masculine energy a very guarded and protected energy and it's so it's it's safe for you to be and to exist okay you're going to be protected no matter what and that's all you just to remember during this next coming season, whatever challenges that you may have, whatever difficult times that you may go through, to remain faithful, to remain flexible, and to be open 
um, because those difficulties are really opportunities for us. It's opportunities for growth. It's opportunities for us to be in alignment with a new version for ourselves. And then it creates even more opportunities. It's like that web, that eight energy where there's so many paths available to us if we just really open our eyes and see what we could do if we wanted to, if we made different choices. Um, I said something a couple of videos ago about you can't see the forest for the trees and this card is really giving that to me right now with a lot of um of those trees there in the background so that's being able to really look at the bigger picture and just the clouds surrounding that energy is that you know we th there's going to be a potential time where we can overthink and get into real stress okay and when you become stressed out that starts to affect you mentally emotionally and physically your health is affected your digestive system is affected your endocrine system is affected um and it makes the hormones in your body start to fluctuate when you get stressed out so remember when you do get into these more challenging times to ground yourself, to be present, ask yourself what it is that you need, ask yourself what is in my control and what is not in my control and the things that are not in your control, release it and let it go. And the things that are in your control, you can begin to ask the right questions, the what questions, what can I do about this? What do I have available to me to fix this? You know, those type of questions. Um, and underneath that card, wow. I just feel called to pull up rebuild. So, you know, this is the energy of 16 and one and a six. We're moving into a time where we have to lead. We have to lead with love. Okay. And that in itself is going to rebuild. If you can see, she's even like giving Reiki to her heart chakra right there. So this is going to be a time where we're basically rebuilding from the heart space. So as we begin to accept and heal if forgiveness, if we feel like that's necessary, whatever it is that we're doing and we're healing up this heart chakra, it's allowing us to be healed in other ways where we can rebuild that financial stability, when we can rebuild our mindset, you know what I'm saying? So this energy moving into 2023 is just really beautiful, okay? And then under that is the energy of nine, okay? And um, it says dreams coming true, okay? And we had this come out a couple of readings ago, this same card. And this was on the bottom of the deck, actually, when I first began to shuffle. I felt that energy. And this energy is just like, you are the master of your reality. When we say the universe, we are the universe. The universe is a reflection of our own wants and needs and also what it is, our choices. Each choice that we make puts energy out into the universe and the universe just sends that energy back to us. So that goes with the saying, where you put your energy is where it's going to grow at. So whatever you want to manifest into your reality, whatever dreams that it is that you want to come true here, moving into 2023, then you have to be that energy for it to come. And under that, it says well-deserved reward. So whatever it is that you want, you, you can do it. You can manifest it, but it's all up to you. It all starts with your daily choices, your daily thought patterns, your daily habits. Um, and the two cards that came out, we've got the energy of number four. Okay, this is balance. This is stability. This is the home and the family. And it says opportunity beckons. This is going to be an opportunity that is created to bring you a lot of potential. Um, but just feeling the energy off of this car is these opportunities in 2023 are going to be unlike any opportunities that you had before in the sense that it may not come how you thought that it would come okay 
and that is where it comes in that you need to be open and flexible and really channeling that fine energy to see things you know sometimes our biggest blessings are disguised as you know something that may feel hurtful in the beginning sometimes it's is disguised in loss sometimes you know what i'm saying it's disguised in in the healing so be open to these opportunities um and then the last card that we have coming out is the number seven okay and it says daydreams and decisions um i know that we had this card come out recently in a reading and this person is really giving me high priestess vibes okay with this number seven energy they are definitely in tune channeling their emotions not letting their thoughts become of them the energy is almost just filled up inside of them if that makes sense okay so that means that they're using this energy um daydreams and decisions is really to me asking you to have balance between what it is that you want and what and then your choices so all of your dreams have the potential to come true but are you in alignment with those decisions and alignment is not just the energy for me alignment is also the actions it's also the belief of it it's also the emotions that you put towards certain things do you really feel it do you really believe it you know what i'm saying I've been watching this show for like a couple of weeks and I am literally obsessed. It's on Netflix and it's a Korean like drama and it's called um, The Alchemy of Soul. The Alchemy of Souls is like a, a form of witchcraft that they do where they put one soul in another person's body. So they use this powerful stone to create these now, the powerful stone has the power to heal. You can control the skies with it. So basically, you control all the diff all the four elements with the stone. And um, it's pretty much being in the energy of, of the um, alchemist. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, okay, so I can do anything I want with this energy. But you can't do anything you want with the energy because everything has a cost. OK, what you put into the energy you're going to get back and that could be for the good or for the worst. So I'm going to link that show below if y'all are interested in watching. It has hella messages in it and I'm just like really obsessed with it for real. Um, Is there anything else that I wanted to say about the energy of 2023? Um. I will say just this is the seventh year that the number seven does rule the crown chakra. It's the color violet and it's located at the top of the head. It regulates the pineal gland, skull, and brain. And it's associated with grace, beauty, serenity, oneness with all, our divinity, selfless realization, understanding, and enlightenment. Okay, so I will send that with you for you to process. Um, I really hope that you guys have a great new year. Make sure that you really do, you know, put your intentions out there, what it is that you want for it to come into fruition, but more than anything, not what you want, but what you are willing to give up instead of the 2023 writing, um, you know, intentions, asking for something from the universe i encourage you to instead actually write what are you willing to give up to become in alignment with your highest self um what are you willing to give up what can you release during this time because this is the winter solstice so right now this is the time for us to give up to give that energy back to the universe and then in turn when the real new york new year comes in when springtime comes in then that is when we will see the um how we wrote reap what we have sowed so to speak um 
um yeah that's all i really had to say i hope that you guys i'm sending you with so much loving healing and abundant energy i love you so much peace out